In this video, we will be looking at how to use air-to-ground cannons and rockets when in the Mirage 2000C. We will go over the parameters of both weapons, how to prepare the cannons and rockets for delivery and the various options you can select, the use of the relevant HUD symbology, how to achieve optimum ranging, and the typical parameters of an effective attack profile. Hello fellow virtual aviators, we are back in the pleasurable and paradigmatic Mirage 2000C and today we are looking at our first application of weaponry for air-to-ground attack, specifically using the DIFA 554 30mm cannon for strafing and the use of the SNEB 68mm rockets fired from our Matra 155 rocket pods. Whilst it's a beautiful day over southern Iran, it's not so rosy on the ground, however. A rogue general and forces loyal to him have taken control of some coastal areas via an amphibious assault, including the city of Bandar Abbas, the two airfields serving the city, and some dock facilities. Over the course of the next few tutorials, we will be dealing with these ground forces in a variety of different ways using the air-to-ground ordnance options we have available to us. Although the Mirage 2000C is first and foremost an interceptor, she is also a competent strike aircraft, especially for low threat targets. Our first target will be to knock out the Rogue General's flanker air cover here at Bandar Abbas International, by strafing them before they can get up in the air. There are also some T-72 tanks close by. Our second target will be to thin out the concentration of BRDM-2 scouts in the town itself. For the purposes of today, we will be limiting ourselves to cannons and rockets when attacking these targets. If you are familiar with SNEB rockets, please feel free to skip the next section, but first a short presentation on some important concepts. In this briefing, we are looking at the SNEB 68mm rockets carried by the Matra 155, or Type F4, rocket pod. SNEB is an abbreviation of the unwieldy phrase Société Nouvelle des Établissements Edgar Brandt, the name of the organization which developed it. The rockets were manufactured by major French conglomerate Thomson Brandt, or Thomson CSF, which is now part of the Thales Group. The SNEB 68mm rocket can be launched from a number of delivery platforms, the most common of which is the Matra 155, or Type F4 rocket pod. SNEB rockets have various different warheads with which they can be armed, however our module in DCS World can be armed only with the Type 256P EAP multipurpose fragmentation warheads, which are best employed against soft and lightly armoured targets. Comparable weapons include the American Hydra rockets and the Soviet S-5 and S-8 series of rockets. The Mirage 2000C can carry two or four Matra 155 rocket pods on its wing hardpoints. Each pod carries 18 SNEB rockets, making a total possible complement of 72 rockets. They can be fired singularly or in salvos. Although laser-guided SNEB variants exist, those carried by the Mirage 2000C are unguided, and so must be aimed carefully and deliberately using a reticle on the hood, and only fired when in an effective range. Ranging is achieved using the Mirage's radar and radar altimeter. The typical attack profile is to dive on the target from approximately 10,000 feet at approximately 20 degrees. Approach speed should be between 500 and 550 knots. Rockets are then fired at an optimum range. The reticle is the same for air-to-ground guns and the rockets, and comprises of an aiming dot showing the calculated impact point and a ranging circle similar to that used in air-to-air -air gunnery. The difference here is that regardless of the weapon selection, the markers on the reticle refer to concepts rather than specific ranges. With the target under the aiming dot, 
the ranging circle will unwind like a clock running backwards as you close on it. Although you can fire once within maximum range, the optimum time to shoot is when the ranging circle is in the 6 o'clock position. After executing your shot, pull out of the dive to remain in the safety zone, which will be indicated by HUD symbology. Thank you for listening. Now let's see how strafing and SNEV rockets are employed in our beloved Mirage 2000C. Okay, so as we saw in our air-to-air -air gunnery tutorial, we need to do some preparation on the ground before firing up the engine. For the guns, we can select regular 30mm armor piercing or armor piercing tracer rounds. And as before, I would recommend you take the full 125 rounds in each defect cannon. Today, we are going to take the full symmetrical complement of rocket pods on hardpoint stations 1, 2, 8, and 9. Also, as before, prior to starting the engine, I can have the crew chief adjust the length of the burst for burst fire mode of the guns on the ground adjustment options sheet on the kneeboard. So let's bring up the kneeboard with right shift and K. And I can see there that near the top uh, that we have the defer burst time, and this is changed by pressing right shift, right alt, and 2, toggling between 0.5 and 1 second bursts. Today we'll go for 0.5. Also on the ground adjustment options sheet, I can adjust the rocket pods burst count by adjusting the Matra 155 burst count option with right shift, right alt, and one. The options are one, three, six, or 18. Again, it is personal preference as to which you choose, and it may be determined by the mission you are about to fly. Personally, I prefer a three rocket burst for most applications. Okay, let's get her started up and get into the air. Okay, we are approaching the AO and I have for convenience programmed our waypoints one and two to be close to the targets for today. Our first target is the flankers on the ground and for these we will utilize air to ground gunnery. To select the guns for air-to-ground use, make sure the CNM switch on the throttle is set to the neutral position, as only air-to-air -air guns and magic missiles are selected using that. We will place our master arm and gun arm switches into the upward arm position, and with the CNM switch in neutral, select air-to-ground cannons with this switch here, a switch that is easy to overlook below the selective jettison switch. S will illuminate to indicate the selection. Upon selection, the relevant options will display on the top row of the PCA panel. TAS, TAS and RS are your ranging methods. TAS, or Telemetry Air Sol, is radar ranging. The RDI radar is placed into a highly directional beam along the longitudinal axis of the aircraft to measure the range to the ground at the impact point. RS, or radio sonde, is use of the radar altimeter, whereby the range is determined trigonometrically using our height above ground level and our attitude in slant. It is usual to have both ranging modes selected and the Mirage will prioritize TAS ranging, only using RS ranging if the radar is unable to provide a slant range. It is possible to use only one ranging mode, but be advised that RS ranging is less effective if you are attacking in rough or complicated terrain. So standard practice is to have both ranging methods selected with an S illuminated under both. For TAS radar-based ranging to function, obviously we need our radar switched on and in emit mode. For RS radar altimeter-based ranging to function, we need to ensure our radar altimeter is switched on with these two switches here, in the RAD 
or H position and the on or M position. LON, L-E-N, and RAP, R-A-P, on the PCA panel refer to the firing rate of the cannons. LON is a low 1,200 rounds per minute, and RAP, standing for rapid or fast, is a high 1,800 rounds per minute. Standard practice is to use the slower of the two firing rates when performing air-to-ground attacks. We also need to select our fire selector mode on the PPA panel, and like air-to-air -air cannons, TOT, T-O-T, or TOTAL indicates fully automatic mode, and PAR, P-A-R, or partial, indicates we are in burst fire mode, the length of the burst being that which we set on the ground. Let's switch to uh, burst fire mode. Our air-to-ground cannons are now set up, but we must access the relevant air-to-ground sub-mode to display the correct symbology on the HUD by placing the Mirage's navigation and weapon system into what is known as selected air-to-ground mode. With an air-to-ground weapon selected, we press the weapon system command switch forward on the HOTAS, and in doing so, our HUD symbology has appeared. CAS CAS, standing not for Close Air Support, but Canon Air Sol, or Air to Ground Cannons, is displayed together with an accelerometer. The two 125s indicate the number of rounds remaining in each gun, and the aiming reticle has also appeared. The radar altimeter height is also displayed in the top right, below 5,000 feet AGL, or as asterisks if above this. On the VTB, TAS is displayed to indicate that the radar is attempting radar ranging if we have selected this mode. The radar altimeter height is also displayed in the center. Okay, so it's our first run on the grounded flankers with the guns. Targets are somewhere close to the waypoint crosshair at the bottom of the HUD, and we're at about 10,000 feet AGL and are looking for an approximate 20 degree dive at 500 to 550 knots. So just pass over a little bit. Our dive is between 15 and 20, which is fine. And we're accelerating. Now let's see if we can spot the targets. And there they are on the apron. The distance in kilometers displayed here indicates that our TAS radar ranging is receiving a return and represents the slant range from your aircraft to the impact point aiming dot on the reticle. So we'll place our target on the aiming dot. Dive angle is okay. Keep an eye on the speed. You certainly don't want to hit Mach 0 0.95. The ranging circle has started to wind down. This is our safety bar and indicates the time remaining before you must pull out of the dive to avoid a C-fit. The bar will move up towards the aiming reticle as we descend and the pullout should be executed before the safety bar reaches the reticle. Optimum range when the ranging circle is at 6 o'clock and second stage of the triggered fire. Deploy countermeasures if required, in this case it isn't, and we'll pull up to prepare for another run. It's not absolutely necessary, but we have climbed back up to 10,000 feet and are rolling in for another attack on those flankers. Again, dive angle is good. I can just about see the enemy scrambling to get onto the taxiway. Keep an eye on that speed. And fire.
A little bit fast here, but it'll do the job. Bang. Now, although nominally we are using 30mm AP ammo, the Difa 554 cannons are no GAU-8 Avenger, and may not be effective against armour like the T-72 tanks down there. Uh, but we'll roll in and give it a go anyway, just to demonstrate. The safety cross appears when the safety bar reaches the reticle. This means pull up now, you maniac. Execute a 5G pull to avoid death. As you can see, all four tanks are still active, so I would think twice about using the guns against heavy armour. At any point, we can remove the air-to-ground symbology by pressing Weapon System Command aft. This places the Mirage's navigation and weapon systems into what is known as memorized air-to-ground mode. Essentially, it returns us to navigation displays on the PCA and HUD. However, the weapon is still selected and can be re-accessed using the Weapon System Command forward. Okay, for our next attack, we are going to switch to rockets, so let's deselect the air-to-ground cannons and select RK3, the abbreviation for our rocket pods. S will illuminate to indicate the selection. As with the cannons, we have the same TAS and RS options for ranging, and again, we'll leave both selected and applied. We also have the option to select the exterior rocket pods on the outboard wing hardpoints, the interior rocket pods, or both. Initially, we'll just use the exterior. On the PPA panel, we'll choose to fire our rockets in a burst or salvo with partial PAR, the number of which we set on the ground. Total TOT would fire all the rockets so long as the trigger is held down. Our next target is close to waypoint 2, so we'll advance to that. Pretty much all the same principles apply with the same dive profile for rockets. From a height of approximately 10,000 feet AGL, a dive at approximately 20 degrees at a speed of 500 to 550 knots. We now have RK for rockets displayed on the hood instead of CAS for the cannons, and our ammo counters have disappeared, but all of the symbology remains the same. and fire, and kablamo. The rockets are great against slightly armoured targets like these BRDM-2 scouts and other APC-like vehicles. I like to put about 6 miles between myself and the target for each attack run, so if you have the target marked with a waypoint or mark point, you can use the HSI to help gauge this and coordinate your roll-in. On this run we'll try and get off shots on multiple targets, so here we go.
As you can see, application and symbology remains the same. Those pods are empty, and we can check that on the store's visualization. So we'll change over onto the interior pods. Back with the T-72 tanks at the airfield now, and again, these rockets are not best employed against heavy armor, as they are of a fragmentation variety. But we'll run in anyway, and fire all our remaining rockets. Well, as ever, I hope that was useful for you. Rocket and cannon runs with the Mirage 2000C are great fun, and I hope you get as much enjoyment out of them as I do. In our next tutorials, we'll be clearing out the remaining enemy forces using our various bomb options. With unrelenting thanks to my patrons, the knavish Yan11 and the honorable Lakota21. Feel free to do the usual thing, like, subscribe, comment and share, but until next time, virtual aviators, I look forward to seeing you online in the skies. This is Reva saying, last call.